and welcome to SVG TV News for Tuesday, August 22nd, 2017. I'm Lafren Fraser with the details. The St. Vincent Girls High School has for the 13th consecutive year topped the CXC CSEC examinations for St. Vincent and the Grenadines with a 95.97% pass rate. This year, 2,674 candidates were registered to set the exams, 1,093 of whom were private candidates, with the other 1,581 being school candidates. The school candidates from 26 secondary schools across SVG wrote 33 subject areas. In this report, Nikita Tony tells us more about the preliminary results from the Ministry of Education and an interview she had earlier today with the acting principal of the top school, GHS. 13th consecutive year, the St. Vincent Girls High School has topped the CXC CSEC examinations for St. Vincent and the Grenadines with a pass rate of 95.97%. Commending the students, parents and teachers for their hard work and dedication, in achieving the highest success at the CSEC examinations, acting headmistress at the All Girls Institution, Michelle Beach, noted that while the school's pass rate of 95.97% this year represents a reduction of 1.3% from that of last year, she still regards their performance as an excellent achievement. We would like to thank God for his help to us throughout the year because without him, um, we really can't do anything and given the conditions under which we have to work we are grateful to him for the successes that we continue to have. 18 subject areas where we would have scored 100 percent passes and there were 10 subject areas where we had a pass rate of between 98 0.78% and 48.38%. Um, that the lowest one has to do with additional math and as you know this is not normally done in secondary schools and we are still um, working on this particular subject area. Noting that 55 fourth form students also sat the general math CSEC examination, Beach added that this is the school's way of challenging the students to do their maximum. Past 18 subjects with grade ones and one subject with a grade two. So that makes it a total of 19 subjects. Iana also sat general math in 2016 when she was a fourth former and she obtained a grade one pass. And I, I have to commend her and the teachers who took the time before school during their non-teaching periods after school to ensure that she had the content to be able to work and um, achieve such an amazing milestone. The acting headmistress went on to comment on the achievement of the school's top performer, Ayanna Ferguson, who is also the top student overall in SVG. Math in particular is a subject where students do not generally perform well. And we, we have seen the potential over the years um, with good teaching to have them do their very best. Um, many of them want to go into fields where math is essential. And therefore, we believe that it is important for them to get as much exposure to the different types of mathematics as possible to give them a better chance to be able to succeed later. Outlining the way forward, Beach said the institution remains committed to achieving a 100% pass rate at the CXC CSEC examinations. The girls did well. However, they would not have done as well in terms of the quality of grades that we would have liked them to have. And um, this is something that we will have to work on as a school for the next year. We have to work on the girls' discipline because that is very important when it comes to being able to work well. You have to understand that success doesn't just come like that, it has to be earned and you have to work to achieve it. The preliminary results by the Ministry of Education show that four other schools recorded a percentage pass rate of 80% or more. They include the St. Joseph Convent Kingston with 90.64%, the St. Vincent Grammar School 87.56%, Thomas Sanders Secondary 86.06%, 
and the St. Martin Secondary School with 82.39%. The most significant improvement in the pass rate for 2017 was seen by the Georgetown Secondary School, with an increase from 45.76% in 2016 to 65.92% this year. Nikita Tony reporting for SVG TV News. Leader of the opposition New Democratic Party or the NDP, Dr. Godwin Friday, is staunchly defending the selection of Colin the Hitman Graham to represent the party for the East St. George constituency. Dr. Friday told SVG TV News earlier today that the process of ratification in the Central Committee has to take place, but the father of three has already exhibited qualities which demonstrate that he will be a man for the people. Dr. Friday described Graham as a person with tremendous qualities and said that despite the criticisms being leveled against Graham of not possessing higher learning certificates, he fits the constitutional criteria. I, I think he is a person of tremendous quality that will represent the constituents as well as these, um, when, the, when the process is completed. He meets the qualifications in the constitution. I didn't say I have a degree for that. And he certainly needs the qualification of being somebody who has his heart in the constituency and who will represent the constituency. I have no doubt about that. That's why he is where he is at this stage in the process of selection of the candidate. We, 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 we um, are very grateful to him for coming forward. And for the other persons who also had contested, but it's a, it's a democratic process and I am that the people in East St. George would be very well represented if Colin is there contested in the next general election. Dr. Friday believes that persons are attracted to the NDP because they want sincerity and wish to make a difference. No doubt that in the New Democratic Party, that wherever there are vacancies for candidates, that we will attract people, mm -hmm. outstanding people, who are willing to represent their constituency and to serve in that capacity and convention and humanity. But it's people who are willing to take up the mantle because it is a tough job. And, um, you know, you hear the, the slings and arrows are thrown at you all the time. But they're very good people who are willing to serve uh, under the banner of the New Democratic Party. We have a very large tent. And we welcome such persons to come forward to represent us and yeah. to represent the people in those constituencies. So we have no trouble at all with that. The NDP leader, however, declined to comment on reports of another new face to be added to the NDP slate of candidates in the person of lawyer K. Bacchus Batiste, who is reportedly being considered for the West St. George constituency with reports that Dr. Jules Ferdinand has tendered his resignation. The Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, or the ECCB, wishes to assure the public that the Eastern Caribbean currency, or EC currency, remains stable and that the EC bank notes are protected by the various security features of the notes. Deputy Director of the Currency Management Department, Rosbert Humphrey, says the Royal Grenada Police Force recently retrieved three counterfeit $50 notes bearing serial number SR380132 and one $100 note bearing serial number VW033672. He, however, gives the assurance that there is no need for the public to be alarmed. Humphrey says that of the banknotes throughout the world, the EC notes are known to have the most security features. However, the ECCB urges the public to be vigilant, particularly during the times of festivities when perpetrators tend to engage in the production and circulation of counterfeit notes. He added that there are officers in the police forces and commercial banks across the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union, or the ECCU, who are trained to identify counterfeit note, EC notes. The public is reminded that it is an offense to be in possession of counterfeit EC notes. Individuals who are in possession of counterfeit notes or think they may have received such notes during their business transactions are asked to take them to the police criminal investigation department in their respective countries or to the ECCB agency office in their respective countries. The Public Health Department is serious about its commitment to rid SVG of derelict vehicles. 
Chief Environment Health Officer Neri James made this clear as he spoke with SVG TV News on site where several abandoned vehicles were removed by work crew of the Solid Waste Management Unit across the Camden Park area today. James said prior to today, vehicles were inspected and tagged as part of the earlier phase of the operation with the work today consisting of the removal of such vehicles in targeted communities. James added that the response from the public has so far been good as they strive to make SVG a healthier nation. We have saw 150 um, notices. We have 40 persons actually um, complain. So we expect the others to, um, to um, comply very soon. We have, we, we just um, came from shops and then we are now at Hartley Hall, okay? So from here, we are going back to probably um, Lago Height and other, other um, places. The public response in this case is good. We haven't got anyone that, that actually um, challenging us. So no, no, we are good here. Yeah. Deeming the project as ma a massive operation, James highlighted one particular vehicle which he described as a health hazard. The vehicle posed what we call a um, public health nuisance, okay? Meaning that the mere fact that it is here, it is unsightly, number one. Number two, it is a breeding ground for rats and also um, mosquitoes. And we really want to see our state as a clean state. Hence, hence we are here to just show this state that we are extremely um, serious about this. Okay, so we are removing this vehicle. Give us your full, full um, support. We need your full support in order to make this country safe for not only us, but for you. Collection Superintendent at the Solid Waste Management Unit, Greg Francois, said some vehicles not only pose a health risk to the public, but also a hazard for one's own safety. Let's just take a narrow road, for instance, children walk into school and they have to go out into the main road, they cannot utilize the sidewalk, you know, and that, that's a danger. Also, people have complained about um, vehicles even providing hiding places for people whose activities are definitely outside of the law, if you understand what I mean. And during our, this period, we have come across vehicles breeding rats, and you know, rats are responsible for the spreading of things like leptospirosis. We have come across vehicles breeding mosquitoes, Aedes aegypti mosquitoes responsible for dengue fever, Zika, chikungunya, and, and so forth. So what we are doing has a great impact on the society as a whole, both in terms of lifting the general appearance and in terms of protecting the health of all of our, um, all of the persons that we assist through the various agencies. The Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force and the Public Health Department have come in for high praise as the par they partner with the Solid Waste Management Unit to remove derelict vehicles across SVG. Superintendent of Collections at the Solid Waste Management Unit, Greg Francois, said there is room for other stakeholders to get involved in the project as the task is a mammoth one. And so I want to congratulate the police and public health for the work that they are doing. And I hope that as we continue, that we will see an impact not only in one part of the country, but the entire country as a whole, because we intend to continue this program. Well, I would think that um, other people who would have a definite interest in what we are doing would be like the tourism department. So, certainly. And when I also think of the planning division, because um, a lot of public nuisances are created by roadside garages also. So I, I, I think that the planning department, this is a program that they need to also support and be a part of. 
Francois highlighted the unique advantage of working with the Public Health Department and the RSVG Police Force and considers the involvement of both institutions in the project of strategic importance. Um, because it is only by these joint activities and linkages that we can really be effective. Because, for instance, if you take solid waste by itself, we don't have the power to prosecute anybody. So we could not do it. But when we get with public health, they have the power both on public and private premises. When we get with the police, they can serve notices either as a litter offence or as a traffic offence. And what I like about the police notices when they are served as traffic offences is that the person is given 48 hours. And <laughs> that, that is very, very helpful because it's not a lot of time to make excuses and so on. They just got to do what they're supposed to do or face the, the court system. Aiming to raise awareness for a number of social issues which have and continue to plague the citizens of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, kayaker and founder of the Team X Kayaking, Mark Sardine, is using his sport to fight for a cause. As part of his efforts, on Sunday, August 20th, Sardine embarked upon a three-hour and five-minute kayaking journey from Indian Bay to Bequay and back to show his willingness to fight for a better nation. In an interview earlier today with SVG TV News, Sardine spoke ex explaining the purpose of his mission and how each Vincentian can play their part in riding the con ridding sorry, the country of many of these issues. In light of a number of infectious diseases and social issues which continue to plague the Vincentian society, one Vincentian by the name of Mark Sardine is taking the stand to make a difference. Working through his organization, the Team X Kayak Team, Sardine explained that his passion to make a change in this country came about after he had served for many years in law enforcement in the USA, noting that if he could serve and protect others, he should be able to give of himself in his home country. I will keep on standing for my country 100%. I had other events to do for this year, but this is far too important for me to let it go. I will stand up among my country 100% to make these positive changes. To with a healthy country, a non-violence country, we have a wealthy country. And the only how we can do this, you have to stand up and make a difference. On Sunday, August 20th, Sardine braved the currents and embarked upon a wrong trip between Bequay and Indian Bay which saw him paddling his kayak for some three hours and five minutes. This, according to him, was just one of his many efforts to raise awareness against HIV, gonorrhea, and violence, which are prominent issues in SVG that need more attention. But seeing this is so severe in our country, I will cancel everything, stand alongside my country, work with the HIV unit if I have to, to make a difference in our country. When your young people are getting infected and you throw them in the streets and the streets refuse them. Hunger set in. Right behind that is suicide. Come on, we pass them stages. 40% VAT and alcohol. Reduce the VAT off the food table. Let's make common sense in our country. Each and every one of us will benefit from it. The activist went on to call upon all Vincentians to get on the move and make the choice to be the change. There's no time to turn your back. The violence from the guns, the guns that reach in our shows and blind eyes are turned to these weapons. There's no time to turn your back. You come from abroad with an education to make tomorrow a brighter day with country and you are sitting down and denying to stand up and make a difference. Asking you be a concerned citizen, stand up and let's make a difference in our country. Sardine aims to get more active in the community, joining with various organizations to share his knowledge and get more persons on board with reading SVG of various issues. Nikita Tony reporting for SVG TV News. 44-year-old Monique Clark of Bayabu, who was doused with gasoline and set ablaze in an incident at her home on August 13th, passed away this morning at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital. Clark suffered second and third degree burns to 85% of her body from the incident. 
Police have since charged 33-year-old Pedro Ashton with the in intent to commit murder. It is expected that the charge will be upgraded to murder. Ashton is expected to return to court on September 4th. In an earlier interview with SVG TV News, Clark's sister, Aisha Richardson, said that her sister told her that she was laying in bed after returning from a karaoke in the neighborhood when her boyfriend, whom she had an abusive relationship with, came home demanding money from her. And when she refused, he began throwing a liquid substance on her, which at first she thought was water. However, it turned out to be a gasoline substance as she was set ablaze thereafter. Clark managed to put out the fire with the assistance of her son. She was rushed to the Bayabu Health Center and was then transferred to the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital, where she died this morning. The General Employees Cooperative Credit Union Limited, or GECU, continues to place much emphasis on youth development. Earlier today, the credit union commenced its annual Youth Leadership Symposium at the Anglican Pastoral Center. The two-day symposium seeks to expose the core principles of cooperatives to more than 50 of its scholarship holders. This year's symposium is guided under the theme Gen Z, Credit Union Agents for Change. Nolisha Miller tells us more in this report. Annual Youth Leadership Symposium is part of GECU's efforts to expose its 65 scholarship holders to the core principles of cooperatives through different presentations and team-building exercises. Speaking at the opening ceremony earlier today, on behalf of an absent Miniva Glasgow, the chairperson of the scholarship committee, GECU senior marketing officer Danny Lee Francis said the symposium is a way of teaching the participants to value their scholarships. She further emphasized on the importance of youth development, noting that GECU's keen interest in this area will no doubt be of great benefit in the coming years. The attempt by GECU a few years ago to start a youth arm is a step in the right direction. The effort must be continued in order to harness and hone the skills of the young people by listening to their suggestions for improvement and growth in the movement. This would instill in them a sense of dignity and pride when they feel that they have something meaningful to offer. Importantly too, for the credit union will be a deliberate attempt to focus on its brand. What do I mean? Simply put, the credit union must ensure that Generation Zers could identify with its core values and promises, its mission, its vision and cultural statement. GECU's president Gary Matthias stressed on the modern skills he says today's youths should focus on developing. He added that such skills will be in great demand in the not too distant future. There is a direct and indisputable link between access to quality education and e economic and social development. Um, today's students need 21st century skills, like critical thinking, problem solving, creativity, and digital literacy. Learners of all ages need to become familiar with new technologies and cope with rapidly changing workplaces. Shedding light on GECU's constant technological development, featured speaker Kimberly Cambridge said investing in today's youth is of significant importance to the credit union. Your generation has more knowledge about computers and things going viral than any previous generations ever will. Even the language that you use is not the same. Things made in previous generations were perfected for you. Even these apps, the ATM cards, the social media access was done so that it could cater to persons who are millennials and especially the centennials. Speaking on the way forward, she urged the participants of the Youth Symposium and GECU's Junior Savers to use social media as a strategy to keep the credit union in the forefront. We believe in your abilities to keep things moving forward. The same way that you were able to use social media to contact your friends and other business places to inquire about services, do the same with the Geku app. Download it, support local, tweet them, message them on Instagram and keep them talking about the services that they offer, such as interest rates for the student loans when you're ready to go off to study, or ask them questions about things that you would like to see happen in the credit union. 
create your own hashtag. So maybe that is something that you guys can come up with over the course of the next two days. The symposium is being held under the team Gen Z Credit Union Agents for Change. Nolisha Miller, The Evening News. A quantity of supplies, including pampers and walkers, were handed over to the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital earlier today. The donation was made by Vinci Liberators SVG. In presenting the items, President Artis Davis said the organization was pleased to be of assistance to the hospital in this manner and promised further assistance in the future. Karen Johnson, who represented the hospital administrator, thanked the members of Vinci Liberators for their donation and wished that the collaboration between the organization and the MCMH will continue to grow. Johnson further stated that the supplies would be a great benefit to the patients using the facility.